Good evening, uh, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this online service. We have just begun a new series concerning all the commandments of God. The Word of God tells us that we are to obey the commandments of God and Jesus told us that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. And then the second is like it, that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And Jesus said, if we were to obey these two laws, these two commandments, then we would have obeyed all that the Lord has taught us, all that is uh, required of us, of the prophets, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the Word of God. And so we know that these are all that God asks of men, to love Him and to love men. And this is how we should live our life on this earth. And uh, just before we move on to learn how are we to love our neighbor, because it's not just knowing that we are to obey, but uh, we, are, we, we need to know how we are to do it. And uh, we, we just want to focus, first of all, on the greatest commandment, to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. And uh, a, a rich young man came to Jesus and asked Jesus, you know, what, what must he do to get eternal life? And Jesus answering in Matthew 19, verse 17, he said, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. And then we jump to verse 23. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, I tell you, it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. So can you see, if we want to have life, eternal life, we are to keep the commandment. Jesus didn't say, you know, there's no way you can obey the commandments uh, uh, and therefore it is being abolished. And I have come and to bring you grace, to bring you salvation. We know those are truth. But Jesus said, I come to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law. And the, he said, the Spirit gives life. And in these two greatest commandments, is the Spirit of the law. It's how we are to obey the law. It's how we are to fulfill uh, the Word of God. And so Jesus also uh, mentioned that to enter into life is to enter the kingdom of heaven. So he said, you do this, then you will live and we are to obey them. So, uh, so we can see the importance of keeping the great, greatest commandments uh, of God uh, in, in our life. And in order for us to keep the commandments of God, we need to know what God wants us to do. In Luke 10, verse 25, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked, what is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. So you can see that uh, in order for us to do what is required of us in the commandments of God, we need to know what is, what is written. And that's why Jesus asked this man, what is, what is it that is written in the law? And not only do we need to know what is written, we need to know 
what it means. How are we to fulfill and carry it out? Because Jesus uh, asked him the, 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 the next part of the question. He said, how do you read it? It's one thing to have the law. It's one thing to have the Bible. It's one thing to read it. You know, a lot of people, they read the Bible. Well, some don't read. Others read, but they do not know what it means. They do not know what is required, how to apply the law or the Word of God. That's why Jesus asked him, how do you read it? A lot of people misinterpret what the Word of God is saying. So that's why we have this struggle. Do you still talk about the law? Aren't we in the, in the era of grace? And now the law is, is, is done with. And you see, there are the eternal laws of God that will never be abolished. Jesus said, I come to fulfill that law. And Jesus said, if you teach people to do, to not to obey, you are the most little in the kingdom of God. And that's why we need to know what the Lord requires of us, what the Word of God requires of us so that we can obey uh, and, and do that. So it's not just to know, it's also to do, right? In order for us to enter life, in order for us to enter into the heavenly kingdom. And uh, so uh, we fulfill the requirement that God wants us. Look at Mark 12, verse 28 onwards. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one answered Jesus is this here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this love. Your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than this. Well said, teacher. The man replied, You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but Him. To love Him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So can you see, we're not just to know, but we are to read it correctly. We are to rightly interpret, understanding what God's law requires of us. So this teacher of the law said to love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. You know, there are people who are busy serving God. There are people who offer sacrifices because they think that's required of them. But, but the, the Pharisee, the teacher, the teacher of the Lord told Jesus, he said, what's more important you know, what we do has got to be uh, motivated by the love for God. It's not a ritual, it's not an outward act, but our inner motivation that causes us to do all these things is because we love the Lord our God with all of our heart. You know, you can offer sacrifices without loving God with all your heart. Isn't that so? We can serve God without loving God. Just busy because it's required of us. But Jesus wants us to, to, to love Him and serve Him out of that love. Because if we were to obey it like the law in the letter of the words, you know, we will always do things wrong with the wrong attitude. But when we love, 
God, with all of our heart, do it from that love. We will surely get things right、uh, eventually. So this is more important than all burnt offering and sacrifices. So the fundamental motivation for us to live on this earth is to love God with all our hearts and to love man as ourselves. And if we do not serve God、uh, or offer our sacrifices out of this love, in fact, we gain nothing. Look at First、uh, Corinthians thirteen, because some people they they serve God, they give not because they love God. So yeah, they do love God, but they are. They are the center of their motivation. Some they give to、uh, uh, and serve to find their own self worth. Although that can come to us, but that's not our motivation. We give because we love God. We 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 give not to not to gain、uh, with the purpose of gaining for ourselves. No, but rather we give because we love God. We serve God because we love Him. And the rest are just God's blessing and God's rewards and and and、uh, and God's faithfulness and grace towards us. So look at First Corinthians thirteen, verse one to three. He says, "If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging." Symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So can you see there are people who do things, who sacrifice, who serve. What's the purpose? So that they may find their worth, so that they may gain as a result of it. But、uh, but the word of God is telling us in First Corinthians here, if you do not do all this thing out of this basic motivation of loving God with all your heart. You know, you say, "You are nothing. I'm nothing." And then you say, "I gain nothing." So you will gain nothing as far as God is concerned. That means, well, what you do may be good. Maybe other people may even benefit from what you do, because when you give towards a good cause, you know, other people get benefited. But as far as God is concerned, when you give it. Not out of love for him, you know. You you gain nothing. You gain nothing. So God looks beyond our deeds. He looks into our heart. And 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 it's so important that we obey these commands. That we love God with all of our heart, because there's only one God. There's only one God, so it tells us that we are created for God. We are created to serve Him, and that's why we have to love Him with all of our heart, with all of our、uh, soul, and all of our mind, and all of our strength. So, can you see the purpose why we are created? We're created for God. We're created to serve Him, and we have to do it with all of our heart. All of our being, our emotion, our mind, our strength. I think it's good for us to really meditate on this command and see how we are doing in obeying these commandments. You know, because I'm sure as Christians we do love God, we do serve God, we do, you know, try and. 
no God. We, we do all this thing. But what God requires of us is to do it with all of our heart, all of our emotion, our, our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. And so we, we really need to, to meditate on it and see how shortcoming we are and, and what must we do so that we can fulfill these commandments and enter into His heavenly kingdom, His life, His eternal life. So we want to look into the Bible, into David. This man is our example of someone who loved God with all his heart and all his uh, soul and, and, and mind and, and, and strength. Acts 13, verse 22. Acts 13, 13, uh, 22. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. I think that summarizes a man who loved God with all his heart, soul, mind, strength. You know, God says it, a man after my own heart. A man who, is, who tries, who wants to seek after, who wants to know what I'm thinking so that he can do, so that he can obey and follow what I want. And he will do everything everything I want him to do. So you see, David is a man who has given himself over totally to serve God's purpose in his life. And uh, God mark up this kind of man. In other words, it doesn't matter to God how we serve Him. And those who serve Him with all His heart, all His mind, soul, and strength, God muck up that man. Because sometimes we, we thought all His grace, well, we just believe and we, we just do what we can. You see, we deceive ourselves. We do not honor God the way we should, and treat Him and honor Him as God. We just follow Him out of convenience because there are, benef you know, there are benefits that we receive and so on. But, but God is after our hearts. God wants us to love Him. This is a commandment, eternal commandment. We have to love Him with all of our hearts, our soul, our mind, our strength. And that's the decision that we have to make for ourselves. We have to decide this is how we're going to live and this is how we're going to follow him. You know, David has seven brothers. They're brought in the same family, same environment. And yet out of this, only him, only David, this young boy, decided that he will seek after God, that he will want to know God's heart and want to live for God with all of his life, to serve God's purpose in his life. The rest of the brothers didn't. So it's a decision that you have to make. And we all have to make that decision. God requires it of us. Whether we will obey him or not, well, that's, that's your, dis, your choice. And a lot of us, we deceive ourselves. You know, oftentimes you see brothers and sisters who are not committed, who has, a, has been missing from church, not because they can't, but because they won't. They won't set aside time. They, they do not have the heart 
to really seek after God and to serve God. But when you talk to them, you know, they will tell you things and then they will add this word, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. You see, that's the excuse that we uh, throw out to justify our coldness, lukewarm and, and attitude towards God. But the truth is, God knows your heart. He knows your heart are full of wickedness. He knows your heart are full of deceit, lies, deception. That's what the Word of God say to heart in Jeremiah 17 verse 9 and 10. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. You see, God searched our heart. And that's why He came to Abram. Because He wants to know, Abram, what's in your heart? Since Isaac was born, you know, it looks as if you have lost your love for the Almighty God. So God tests our heart. And it's through our action, it's through what, our commitment that we show that we love God with all of our heart. And the people who has no commitment and who couldn't be bothered and say, God knows my heart. If that's you, let me tell you, your heart is full of deceit, lies. Because God does know our heart. And God search it out. Because that's how He is going to reward each man. And uh, we can be deceived. We can just uh, miss it. You know, the prophet Samuel, when he come to, came to the house of J.C. to anoint one of his sons to be, to be king. Oh, he was so taken by the, the elder brother, Eliab, you know, because he was tall, handsome, he looked smart. And so we can be deceived by, by outward uh, appearances. But God told Samuel, God doesn't look at the appearance like man. He looks at the heart and he has rejected this, this, uh, David's brothers. He has rejected them. And so, if we do not give ourselves to God with all of our hearts, with all of our uh, soul, mind, and strength, will God still welcome us into His eternal kingdom? Because He reward each man according to what they do, their deeds out of their heart. So how are we to love God with all of our heart? What can we learn from David? What did he do to, to, to have the heart of God, to love God with all his heart? You know, we are to seek after God's heart like David. And we know, reading the scriptures, that David, when he's in the field, looking after the father's sheep, he will spend those time drawing near to God, worshipping God. And hearing what God is saying. You know, when we come before God and rest in God and draw near to Him and want to know His heart, He will speak to us. He will show us the things that we are to do. And I discover that also, that when I come before Him in the morning and just, just wait on Him, He will drop certain things into my mind, the things that, or even reveal certain 
scripture verses to me, what it means, things that I would not have seen or would not be, uh, well, did not understand. He, he just opened my mind into those things. So when we seek God, when we draw near to God, He will speak to us. Look at our Lord Jesus in John 5, verse 19 and 20. Jesus gave them this answer very truly. I tell you, the Son can do nothing by Himself. He can do only what He sees His Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all He does. Yes, and He will show Him even greater works than this, so that you will be amazed. So can you see, when we draw near to Him, when we seek after Him, God loves us. God loves us for doing that. And He will show Himself to us. He will show us the works that we are to do. And greater works than this. So that people would be amazed. So if we want to be extraordinary, that's what happened to David. Because he seeks after God. He knows God's heart. When he encountered Goliath, this giant, that everybody is running away. He was able to rise up to confront this giant because his heart is the same as God's heart. And God's army is being ridiculed, is being put to shame, intimidated. You know, so David rise up in the spirit of God. He rise up because he have the same heart, same mind, same spirit. As the Almighty God. That's why he says, he speaks to Goliath, I come to you in the name of the army of, of, of Israel, the, the God of uh, the army of Israel. See, David rise up in the spirit of God because he has the mind and the heart of God in that situation. So God will show us, when we come to him, he will show us what He wants of us, what He wants us to do. And we will do extraordinary things because there are things that we just cannot think and, and, and cannot believe that we can do that. But God will drop into our hearts so that we begin to see them and we begin to nurture them, we begin to rise up in faith and we begin to have the same spirit as God. And we are able to do Great things for God because we seek after Him. That's what Jesus meant. When you obey these commandments, these great commandments, and you will uh, uh, know His heart, you will know His mind, and you will be able to enter into life, enter into His life. So even on this earth, even here, God wants us to enter into His life so that we are not living just out of this human life, doing ordinary things that is expected of us. But as we love God with all our heart, we will do extraordinary. That is way beyond you know, people's expectations so that people will be amazed with what God has accomplished through us. And uh, when we have the heart of God, we begin to think of the kingdom rather than just ourselves. You see, the armies of God, they just run away when Goliath appeared because they think about themselves, they think about self-preservation. But whereas David was thinking about the kingdom of God, how dare these uncircumcised men were to ridicule the army of God, the army of Israel, right? And, and when we have the heart of God, we will think about the house of God. David, when he lived in his palace, oh, he enjoyed life. 
But then he never forget the ark of God is only dwelling in a tent. So he thinks about a house of God. He thinks about what God is thinking, rather than just self. Remember, our motivation, our basic motivation to live this life, is to love God with all of our hearts, our soul, our mind, our strength. That's what we are created for, and that's how we are to live. And we will obey God in all things. Yes, I know. In truth, there are times we struggle. There are times we disobey. But thank God for His grace. But for us who wants to live our life, to love God with all of our hearts, we will keep pressing on. We will keep moving forward. To do what God wants us to do, you know David also failed in his life in certain areas, but he kept pressing on. He kept pressing on, and uh, and this is what God said of David in uh, Acts thirteen verse thirty six. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors, and his body. Decay. So can you see, David served God's purpose. He lived for God's purpose in his life, and he served God's purpose, and he died. So this evening we we are reminded once again of the greatest commandment that God wants us to obey, even in this age of grace. And of God's mercy, this is an eternal commandment that will never change. Heaven and earth will to dis uh, disappear, but this commandment has to be fulfilled. That we are to love God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength, and we are to love our neighbor. And uh, so, when we when we seek to do that. Like David, we will seek after God's heart, and we will know the minds of God. We will know the will and the purpose of God. And not only do we seek Him, we are to do what He commands us to do. Because now we know what He expects of us, what He wants us to do, and we will do that. And at the end of the day, I pray that. God will be able to look at us and say, "You have served your purpose in your generation. Now it's time for you to enter into the eternal glory." So let's remind ourselves of the great greatest commandment, and let's meditate as you come before God and see how, which area we have, we have. Uh, Not been doing it, so that we can rise up and seek after Him to fulfill this commandment that God has given to us, so that we can enter into His eternal kingdom. We can enter into His eternal life. We can enter into life. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your precious words. We thank you for reminding us of. The greatest commandment, and to exhort us, and to warn us, and to re, uh, to 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 just prod us, so that we may look at these commandments and look at ourselves, and we want to obey you. We want to love you with all of our hearts, all of our mind, all of our uh, soul and strength. Lord, we pray. Help us to be able to fulfill your word, O oh God. We thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. We'll see you again.